Okay, introduce yourself. I'm Beverly Hannon. I'm 33 years old. Um, I don't know. What do you want to know? <laughs> How long have you been a ghost hunter? Uh, it's got to be at least over five, six years. What's your, what was your most memorable experience at Burlington County? Burlington County. Um, the with the EMF, watching the needle jump and, and then back and forth. Now, when you're sitting in that hall in that dark prison and that needle's going back and forth, what's going through your mind? Where is the the ghost? Where is he? By me or is he? You know, is he right here? Is it true? <laughs> now, how do you feel now, knowing that there's a possibility that the EVP we caught was created where you were. Well, it freaks me out. I didn't see nothing here, you know, I didn't hear it, so. But it freaks me out knowing that it was by me now. <laughs> what was your most memorable personal experience just in ghost hunting, in, in just the paranormal? Um, I always liked the EVPs I used to get when, uh, the, you know the old the old ones that we listen to, but uh, that one now that we just got from Burlington is the most I would say my favorite. Mm -hmm. Most of, of all experiences I had, I really haven't had really evidence like that with the EMF and you know with the EVP. That was probably the best EVP. I just want to see something like mm -hmm. to pr like I need to like I want to see actually some good stuff. Right. How much of a role do you think your mother played? Oh, okay. the whole thing. Like, she's really the one that got me into it and everything. Mm -hmm. And what do you look forward to the most working with uh, us? Um, at least I know with you guys that when you guys say it's something, it's something. And I know that now. Like before, I would be like, "What is it? You know, what is that?" What, like I always thought it was something else, or something like paranormal. But now I know that with you guys, you are, you know, more in, like interesting, and there's more of us now. Mm -hmm. Usually, I only go with a few people. Right. So with us, I, I have more fun with us too. It's pretty fun. What do you think of your of the chemistry of the uh, of the team? I think it's good. Chemistry's great. We uh, we all get along. Everybody's funny in their own way, and you got like a little bit of everybody's personality. You know, like me, I'm a scaredy cat. You got somebody who really isn't scared at all, like you. Um, Joe, he's hilarious, um, and of course my sister. You know, and Trish, the newcomer, and you know, Trish, my boyfriend, and I think it's a good team. In the Bur in Burlington County, in the prison. What area of the prison do you think is the most creepiest? In the basement. I think where the guards were killed. Or the inmate. Was it the guard? Or the it was just one guard. The guard. The, where he got killed at. That was, I would say, the most freakiest. The most, I would say, the most scariest. And the, um, the part where you go into the hallway where they were all like hung and stuff. Mm -hmm. In that hallway there, that was freaky there too. Did you get any feelings, any sensations, anything at outside around the gallows? Mm -mm. No. Yeah, me neither. All right, introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Chris Deptola. You've done this ten times. You're yeah. the only one that that has done this <laughs> what? the most, the most interviews. Yeah, uh, Chris Deptola. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, take from the top. All right. My name's Chris Deptola. I'm uh, 2010, 30. <laughs> uh, live in Maze Landing. And uh, here I am. What do you look forward to the most working with uh, the crew, the team? Um, something that's going to take me off my feet. I want to see something that's going to be like, wow, I can't believe I've just seen that. That's what I really look forward to. Do you think you could handle um, a physical experience? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I, I have no fear. Maybe that's why I don't see something. 
What are your phobias? Do you have any? Nah. Um, none really. Not really. Nothing really. Nothing really bothers me. No, flying? Nothing? Nope. Not that I can think of, but I don't know. Alright, what was your uh, first experience? Well, I was, I was younger in high school. Um, getting ready for school and uh, at the time we had a dog and uh, he, he was always around me and my closet was at the top of the steps and uh, I felt something like blow by me real fast I turned around there was nothing there I said that, that was it, it freaked me out because I thought it was my dog so that was the really only experience that kind of like during this Shook time, me a little bit. During this time, where was your dog? Downstairs, my mom. So, that that, that was an experience. What's your? Uh, do you have a list of your top favorite experiences at Burlington County Prison? Uh. Yeah, obviously downstairs with the. The EMF going off. Now, what's going through your mind the whole time that's that's going off? What the heck could this be? Yeah, thinking, could it be, you know, our, the phones, the cameras, the electric, the play, who knows? But we tested all that, so. What, who knows? What, what is it that convinces, convinces you personally that it wasn't just coincidental interference I'm not I don't know I'm still kind of tear totter I don't know I, I'm not 100% uh, convinced at all still I think I'll like I said I'll, I'll be convinced really if, if something just I actually say it and it just takes me off my feet that's when I'll be really convinced other than that I'm still like 50-50 and what about the EM, uh, the EVP? The don't you bother me. <laughs> that uh, that brings me over a little bit. Yeah, like I want to know more. Like, what, is this possible? Yeah. Um. But like our discussion, like everything was, we would have heard it on every every camera if it was one of us. So kind of believe that more so makes me more of a believer what do you think about the team you're working with <laughs> great I love it it's fun um, I'm sure everybody else said it great yeah, everybody's got their own personalities which makes it uh, really unique and, and fun to be with each other and we all get along so that's that's the most thing that they it's important. That's so, yeah, great. I'm not gonna say it's bad. <laughs> but no, it's, it's really good. it's good. Plus we're all close like family. Yeah, it's good. Your name? Trish Leskis. Where are you from? I'm from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, what got you into? Uh, what was it about the paranormal field that you're interested in? Um, I've always been interested in the unknown, but. After I moved from Atlantic City to Northfield, we moved into a, a house that was about 100 years old and started seeing things. Well, actually, my family members started seeing things. I never saw anything, but it raised my interest. Really? Mm-hmm. Because the stories, they matched up so well from each individual that saw what they saw. So you never saw anything personally? Nope. How long have you been ghost hunting? Um, I've only actually really been hunting recently this year because I was traveling on tour across the United States. So it brought me into many different theaters, and I found that in most of the southern theaters, you found you, you came across the older theaters, over a hundred years old. You know, parts of it still intact since they were built, and there was plenty of stories. 
and af and the stories raised my interest and then I would go on break and wander around by myself with cameras and I started taking pictures and I came across lots of my pictures had orbs tons of them thousands of them and after that I was just hooked <laughs> now how would you describe yourself as far as an investigator I, I've seen you you have more of a uh, provoking approach <laughs> I don't know I want to have fun with them I um, I just I think that egging them on torturing them a little <laughs> they uh, they'll get mad or um, annoyed easily and maybe come out um, when I was living in the house that was apparently haunted you know I uh, I was always very afraid, and I felt like because I was afraid, maybe that's why I was the only one in my house that never saw anything. So I changed my approach. I'm trying to be braver and maybe like taunt them a little. What was your best or most memorable experience? Uh, that would have to be in a theater in Mobile, Alabama. And I was, um, there was apparently a suicide up in the rafters of the theater and it was a very old theater, maybe more than 100 years old. And um, we went, me and a group of people went upstairs looking around where there was still caution tape and where there was apparently still the blood stains on the floorboards. And um, while I was up there, I just got the chills so bad and uh, it was the pictures more than anything that, that, that got me because I went with about 15, 16 cast members. We all had digital cameras, and all the digital photos came back the same. We had the same orb-like figures over all of our faces, almost, in the group picture that we took. Really? Mm hmm And that was just, that was so creepy to me. <laughs> you still live in that house? No, we just moved, actually, this year. Where you live now, do you feel any, uh... No, I'm not afraid to wander around my house at night, but in the other house I was. There was something weird about it, you know, and I moved out of that house on my own and, you know, didn't feel one thing in my other houses, but then I came back to live with my mom and then I was a little afraid, you know, in a lightning storm or in the dark by myself. It was weird. It was weird how that how that changed in me. I thought it was, I was just a a scaredy cat but then when I lived alone it's like well what's wrong why why am I not afraid to walk around by myself or right. now aside from that what other uh, topics of the paranormal are you interested in mm. well I used to watch a lot of X-Files <laughs> so the whole truth is out there um, the the notion that we might not be alone in this universe, I mean, how could we possibly be the only living thing mm -hmm. here, um, has always brought up my interest, um, but, so I would say the, the wondering if we're alone, I mean, that, that part of it, I, I love that part of the paranormal, paranormal too. What do you look forward to about, um, try to phrase this, what do you look forward to? the most working with us? I hope that I'll at least get to see something even if it's not a whole something at least if, it, if it's just something of any sort that will prove to me that there is something there that, that all these stories that these things that other people say that they've seen that I've never had a chance to say I hope that one day, you know, that I'll see something so that I can be like, yeah, I, I understand completely. I know, I know exactly what you feel. You know, I know how it feels mm -hmm. to feel like we're not totally alone. I think that would be awesome, and I really hope that I get the chance to, to feel that. What's, what's your greatest ambition? I know um, when we first met you, you wanted to go just by yourself on the gallows. <laughs> What what would be your your greatest ambition? A, a castle? Uh, like I guess your haunted fantasy. My haunted fantasy. Yeah. Oh my. Um, I have always wanted to explore and abandon a sane asylum. Since I was younger, I've always been obsessed with 
abandoned insane asylums. I don't know what it is about them, but they are the scariest places on earth to me. They freak me out more than anything. If you can remember the beginning of Halloween when all those crazy people are out and about in their white gowns because they, they escaped, that right there <laughs> for some reason scared me more than anything has ever scared me. Just thinking that one day I'm going to look out my window and there's going to be people in white gowns walking around. <laughs> I don't know in, why. In the rain. In just, the rain, yeah. exactly. I don't know why that, that freaks me out more than anything. So to walk around and abandon the same side, but I don't even know if I could get up enough guts to ever do that. But if I had the chance, I probably would. I've done lots of research on those kinds of places. <laughs> Anyone that in particular stand out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Essex Mountain. Mm -hmm. and it's in... And it's in... I believe it's in New Jersey, it could be in Pennsylvania, but the Essex Mountain Sanatorium, that one looks fantastic. There's <laughs> a couple good stories about um, patient, you know, mistreatment and, and a couple other things that leads me to believe that it could be pretty haunted, especially with the fact that parts of it used to be a children's orphanage before it got made into what it is now. Anything stand out uh, from the Burlington investigation? Um, Any personal things? I, I, well, I've never been there, so um, it was scary to me in a way just to be in an in a old prison at night, in the middle of the night. And uh, But I think when I was laying on the gallows, that was probably the creepiest thing that I did, because at first I was alone before Joe joined me. And I went up there and I just laid down and looked up. <laughs> right where they were, you know, probably hung. Mm -hmm. And um, that feeling that I got right then, being alone and just laying on something that was so old and in the dark, I just, I got chills and it was just, it was a scary feeling. It was probably the most scared I was that night. Really? Because mm -hmm. you, you, uh, you appeared just the opposite on film. You really? Just, you just wanted to provoke. And I think that the reason why was because I was so frightened. Mm -hmm. I was trying to be more provoking to hide that because, like I said, I, I thought that maybe if I changed that part of me, that maybe I'd end up seeing something. So the more scared I am, the more outspoken I want to be in times like that. <laughs> Your name? Michelle Hannon. And what got you interested in the uh, ghost field? Well, it all started. Um, me and my mom saw, well, to explain the beginning, it actually woke me up out of my sleep, where um, I must have been probably about 12 years old. Um, and I was sleeping, and I was, as I woke up, I looked right over to the window, and I saw a clothes basket just floating in midair and thought I was nuts. <laughs> so I thought I was dreaming, whatever, and I'm just like looking at it, like strange. And so I tapped my mom, she was like closer distance, she was sleeping also. And I said, uh, mom, do you see that over there? And she saw it too. So she starts walking over to it and you know, it starts to lay back down on it, on back to like a couch chair. And then ever since then, it was just crazy. And then, from there, it just stemmed into, we went to go see the Akko Ghost. We heard uh, bangs like on the wall, like knocks on our wall. And then there's also like a story also that my dad did see something in that same very house in the basement. He saw, he thought he saw like a little girl, like maybe his sister's size because she died when she was one. So he thought it was her. It was like, um, you know, like running behind like the, some like water heater in the basement and they heard banging from the, the cellar and stuff like that, so it's just been interested ever since. It's been really, really interesting. What's your greatest memory of the Burlington County investigation? The EMF. The EMF was, um, it put chills down my spine, I mean, literally, because it, it just was creepy. You were the one holding it. Because <laughs> I was the one holding it, yeah, exactly, so, and when it happened, it just, from what i seen with an EMF, how slow that needle moves to when you do go up to an electromagnetic field to whether, to the other way where it was like flipping like the needle was going off like crazy. I just, I knew something just definitely, it, it's just too strange. What's your personal so. opinion about <clears throat> the uh, Burlington County Prison? I think there's uh, some action there. I really do. I do believe it's 
haunted a little bit. I really do. I definitely believe we we did feel. I I felt something, especially also near the ward, the warden's hallway. Right when we got up there, um, it was like right in that long hallway. It just I got chills right away. I felt something really creepy. I definitely think there's something something there for sure. If you could investigate anywhere, anywhere, where where would it be? Where would it be? Honestly, if there's this one house um, that my sister's been talking about where she says she sees stuff all the time. And I would like to go there and check her house out and see if we can find something because I want to see something that's, you know, you definitely have no explanation for it, you know what I mean? But that it is a spirit or a strange phenomenon or whatever, I want to see it. I want to see it and uh, I'd like to go to that house because they said it's really, really haunted, so. What do you look forward to the most working with us? Um, what do I look forward to? Uh, well, number one, we have like so much fun together and then number two, I, I hope we see something. See something even, even better. I hope I actually see like, you know, a figure of some type or something, you know, something really like, I want to see, I want to see something. I want to see a ghost. It's just a ghost. <laughs> okay, what's your name? Joe Carollo, AKA Johnny Bloodhound. And what's your job? My job, I'm the cameraman. Okay. Have you ever had any paranormal experiences? Never. Do you look to have any? Do I look to have any? Oh, uh, if they happen to appear, I'm not saying uh, I'm looking to, in particular, to see anything or not to see anything. It all depends. If it's there, it's there. I can't, you know, it's something I don't have control over. What do you want to get out of this? I guess it's an uh, educating experience more than anything. It's, you know, some learn, something to, uh, like my opinion on the whole thing, I, you know, I believe we do go somewhere when we die. Uh, there could be spirits all around, however, I'm uh, very skeptical. I want to see it first. I want to see some convincing evidence, not just, hey, that that may be something, or we may have seen something, or uh, I want to see something definitive. So what do I want to get out of it? It's a tough question to answer. Let's just say I want to be convinced of something. Let's say that. I want to be convinced of something. Now, is there something in the back of your mind that, that convinces you that there is something that there's something out there or something yeah, visible that, that there's something out there yeah there's something out there I believe I mean you know being a person of faith I believe that there's spirit where do we go I have no idea do we go to this faraway playground in the sky or do we uh, stay around here I, I don't know uh, so that being the case the goal my whole question is could these things be seen on camera that's my big question I believe they could be there, but uh, like I said, it has to. I want to really see something to believe it, something definitive too, not just uh, hey, to see that flash of light, you know. And you want to see something mm -hmm. with some meat on the bones. Now, how far are you willing to go with your belief system into the paranormal when it comes to psychics, UFOs, Bigfoot, mythical creatures? What do you mean? How far do I want to go with my beliefs? What? what at what point? You do believe that there's something out there that could be spiritual. Right. But what about what people say as far as other paranormal events that aren't spiritual, such as strange creatures, UFOs, aliens? I think a lot of it's far-fetched. person's imagination, you want to see. You can tell yourself something a million times and you'll start believing it. Uh, strange creatures, yeah, it's, again, it's possible, Dan, but... I, again, I have to see it to believe. I see it, you know, and I'm of sound mind. I can say, okay, it exists, it's real. Uh, other than that, you know, they're tall tales. So would you announce yourself as the most skeptical of the bunch? Of this bunch, absolutely. However, I say that in a positive way, because I always consider myself a realist. Uh, you know, I'm not one to go chase uh, something that's not existing. You know, I want to, I need, I, like I said again, I'll repeat this a million times, I believe that it could be, but oh uh, yeah, this bunch, I'm definitely a skeptic, but I think for good reason, because a lot of these shows uh, that are out there, and any other show I've seen through the years, nothing has been definitive. Everything, uh, and you mentioned this once, could be explained away. 
cameras can do funny things. If I see with my eyes, I know my eyes aren't doing funny things. How do you see yourself fitting in in the uh, scheme, in, in the spectrum of the five characters? Right. The, the five people. Okay. How would you describe each one? How would I describe each one? Uh, first is how do I how would I fit in in this? <coughs> how would I fit in in this crowd? Thank good. They're great. Everybody's great people. Uh, there's a good chemistry amongst us, and I think the uh, array of personalities is what's going to make this really great. Describe each one. Okay, let's go with the two girls first. You have uh, Bev, and I don't mean this in a bad way. She's the, you know like the scared girl, which is cool. It's a great character. Michelle, you have the the she's like the brave little one, not afraid of anything. And there's you. You're the leader. You're Come on, guys, this is going to be great. We're going to, we're going to find what we're looking for, no worries. You know, you're the, like the fearless leader in a different sense. Chris, uh, I haven't got an opportunity to work with him yet. I know him very well. Uh, the other night, he doesn't say much, which is kind of neat. Okay, here's the quiet one. It doesn't say a word, so he'll remain a mystery. Like, hey, what's this guy thinking? Then you have me, the skeptic, slash the humorous guy. You know, I'm making a joke here and there. Uh, I remember when Bev said her friend saw the Jersey Devil. You know, I got a great kick out of it. And then we went back and forth. Here's the ultimate skeptic versus the ultimate, yeah, I've seen them everywhere I go. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's all done and good. I don't think anybody's clashing. Just personalities are, the, the array, a different array of them is going to make it really so, interesting. So with the five personalities being what they are, uh, they seem to gel very well considering we all have a different objective. Absolutely, here. absolutely. I would think it would be boring if we were all the same. You know, like, hey, did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. You know, here... It opens up conversation, which is great, which is what you want. And when the viewer is seeing this, they're going to see, uh, you know, five different, you know, personalities going at it. And I can, you know, deceive myself now. Uh, I can see one of them saying, "Oh God, did you see that?" You know, maybe like, you know, what, what did you say? You know, you're using your imagination and so on and so forth. <clears throat> what do you think would happen if you're filming and you feel someone grab you, and you know for a fact there's no one there? Uh, I'd have to know for a fact no one's there. What do you mean by that? Because somebody could always be uh, playing a little trick. Somebody standing behind you purposely to mess with you. Well, what do you think your reaction would be when you have that definitive moment when there is obviously you and no one else? And I think it'd be pretty neat, you know. And I can get into why in a minute. Uh, if this were to, and Dan, I'm saying the word if really loudly here. If that were to happen. I guess, I'd, like I said, how definitive would I, I'd have to question myself, okay, was this real or did I trip over something? Let's say, like, I know what you're saying, like, yeah, you felt somebody grab you. You know, it's, you really felt it. And you know nobody's around. Oh, uh, that'd be kind of neat. And I'd be like, wow. You know, just what we wanted. I want that to happen. You know, I want, I had somebody else tell me recently, you shouldn't go to this such and such a place. Uh, you can get hurt, this, that, and the other, or something might happen to you. In a case like this, you almost want to bring that on because you want to see it. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like you, you know you want to ask for a little bit of danger in, in a sense because maybe that's what it takes to see something provoking. So, with regards to provoking a spirit, you would be up for that. Absolutely. I'm going to feel kind of funny doing it if I'm really not believing they're there at that moment. But if that's what it takes to figure, hey, I'm here, mm -hmm. you got to put your best foot forward. Yeah, by any means, if, you know. What did Malcolm X say years ago? By any means necessary, <laughs> and uh, that's what it takes. Sure, we want to we want to get this on film. We this is the whole object here. You know, whatever it's going to take to, you know, try and make this the best as it can be, and to see and to you know discover some kind of truth is, like I said, yes, something could be there, but could we catch it on film? Now you've never had a paranormal experience of any kind. No, you know anyone who has? Yes, that would be my grandmother. She'd see different, you know, the different people, people she never saw before, an old man, an, a quote-unquote ugly old man, a chubby man, a beautiful lady in a white gown holding a baby, you know, different visions of people. And uh, when we went there, we all came to a conclusion that she was sincere. It could be, uh, you know, a sleeping pill she was taking, which brought on a hallucination. Or we also said they could be there, maybe uh, we just couldn't see them, which brings up another argument that we mentioned earlier. Here, maybe they're there, but we just can't catch them on film. And uh, I think she's very credible. I think a lot of us agreed that she was sincere in what she saw. And a lot of uh, questions arose, okay, did she see these things? Well, she saw something. Uh, 
are, are they really real? It could have been a hallucination or maybe the medicine brought on, the ability to see them. There is a million ways to go. My grandmother would see these ghosts. And when she saw them at two other houses, actually. But, you know, the medication was in use at that time, too. Is the Burlington County Prison Museum in Mount Holly, New Jersey haunted? Do the spirit And you got like a little bit of everybody's personality. And then you have like me, I'm a scaredy cat. You got somebody who really isn't scared at all like you. Um, Joe, he's hilarious. Um, and of course my sister, you know, and Trish the newcomer and you know, Trish my boyfriend and I think it's a good team. In the Burl in Burlington County, in the prison. What area of the prison do you think is the most creepiest? In the basement. I think one of the guards were killed. Or the inmate. Was it the guard? Or the it was just the one guard. The guard. The, where he got killed at. That was, I would say, the most freakiest. The most, I would say, the most scariest. And the, um, the part where you go into the hallway where they were all like hung and stuff mm -hmm. in that hallway there that was freaky there too did you get any feelings any sensations anything outside around the gallows mm -mm. no yeah me neither all right introduce yourself <sighs> my name's chris deptola you've done this 10 times you're yeah. the only one that, that has done this <laughs> what? the most the most interviews yeah uh, chris deptola I'm, uh, I'm sorry, take from the top. All right. My name's Chris Deptola. I'm uh, 2010, 30. <laughs> uh, live in Maze Landing. And uh, here I am. What do you look forward to the most working with uh, the crew, the team? Um, so okay, introduce yourself. I'm Beverly Hannon. Um, 33 years old. Um, I don't know. What do you want to know? <laughs> How long have you been a ghost hunter? Uh, it's got to be at least over five, six years. What's your, what was your most memorable experience at Burlington County? Burlington County, um, the, with the EMF, watching the needle jump and, and like back and forth. Now, when you're sitting in that hall, in that dark prison, and that needle's going back and forth, what's going through your mind? Where is the, the ghost? Where is he? By me? Or is he, you know, is he right here? Is it true? <laughs> now, how do you feel now knowing that there's a possibility that the EVP we caught was created where you were? Well, it freaks me out. I didn't see nothing here, you know, I didn't hear it, so, but it freaks me out knowing that it was by me now. <laughs> what was your most memorable personal experience just in ghost hunting, in, in just the paranormal? Um, I always liked the EVPs I used to get when, uh, the, you know, the old, the old ones that we listened to, but uh, that one now that we just got from Burlington is the most, I would say, my favorite. Mm -hmm. Most of, of all experiences I had, I really haven't had really evidence like that with the EMF and you know with the EVP. That was probably the best EVP. I just want to see something like mm -hmm. to pr like I need to like I want to see actually some good stuff. Right. How much of a role do you think your mother played? Oh, yeah. the whole thing. Like she's really the one that got me into it and everything. Mm -hmm. And what do you look forward to the most working with uh, us? Um, at least I know with you guys that 
when you just gotta say it's something, it's something. And I know that now. Like before I would be like, what is it, you know, what is that? What, like I always thought it was something else or something like paranormal, but now I know that with you guys, you are, you know, more in, like interesting and there's more of us now. Mm -hmm. Usually I only go with a few people. Right. So with us, I, I have more fun with us too. It's pretty fun. What do you think of your of the chemistry of the uh, of the team? I think it's good. Chemistry's great. We uh, we all get along. Everybody's funny in their own way.